Hey YouTubers, I uh, had an interesting aha moment a while ago. If I just took the chain off, it might fit around the degree wheel. Turns out the stupid chain will fit over this small comp cams degree wheel. But I'll go ahead and run the new one just in case it is marginally tighter. Well, this block did not come with the provision holes, holes drilled or the provisions to install this timing chain guide. It does somewhat touch the chain. It can't touch it with full tension or it'll just eat right into that plastic. Okay, guys, to kind of speed up the process of hair, I went ahead and got the dial indicator on the peak or the apex of the cam lobe. So we will... Find out what our 50 thousandths number is on the up ramp. Think of an egg. Think of the shape of an egg. Or it's like if this is the engine. Imagine this engine is a cam lobe. Right now we're dead center at the top of the cam lobe. What we're going to do is come back down your up ramp to before 50 thousandths. We're going to take up all the chain slack, come up and stop exactly 50 thousandths of an inch before your top uh, max lift. So hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. So we go past what we want. We want to go past 50 thousandths only so we can have enough room to take up that slack in the chain. Then we will come up the ramp. We will top stop as close to exact 50 thousandths as we can get. So now what we've done is we've established our indicator to find the apex or the top lift of the lobe. Now we've established 50 thousandths before top dead or max lift. And that number is reading 66. So now we've got our first number, 66 before. So now all we'll have to do is go around. Okay, right there, we're back at top max lift. But this time we're going to go over the nose and stop at 50 thousandths after max lift. Again, you want to get, now see, I went one degree past it, so I'm going to back up just a hair to get my slack out of the chain because I want this to be as accurate as I can possibly physically stop this thing at 50 thousandths. 50 thousandths after is that 148 and a half. You could, it's almost a 149. So we could run both numbers and just see what we get. So if we took 66 plus 148 and a half gives us 214.5 divided by 2, 107 and a quarter. If we uh, went ahead and just said that that was a true 149, so I, yeah, the chain made no difference whatsoever going from the used LS2 chain to the brand new out of the box LS2 chain did not change my intake center line of the cam at all. It's still running 107.5. So as soon as I can get a, a bushing for that cam gear, I will gladly, uh, it actually retard that cam two degrees and, and get it in at 109.5, which you know, I'm not going to sweat uh, half a degree with this caveman setup I've got going on here for the recommended, you know, 110 intake center line. These 560 lift, 216, 220 cams, there's a whole slew of those cams that are made by uh, Elgin Industries. They're reboxed. It's what they call white box cams that a lot of big name manufacturers, Texas Speed does it, Trick Flow does it, um, insert, you know, cam companies here, 
their entry level bottom of the line cams they'll have this cam in the box but you won't pay a hundred to two hundred dollars more for it because you're you got their name on it. it has been established a long time ago that many many companies lenati included has always had a habit of buying what people used to, in the industry used to call white box cams generally regularly commonly produced cams for different engine families put a special name on it hey this is going to be our bare bones racing cam we're going to give you a special deal well that's because they didn't make the cam they bought it from elgin put a special fancy sticker on it and raised the price it's the american way guys don't hate the player hate the game okay guys i got her set up on the drill press Try not to make too much of a mess here. Basically, what I'm going to do is eventually I'm going to open up all four of these holes to a 13 30 second bit. What I've done is already started enlarging the cam dowel hole because it's a lot smaller than your bolt holes. So right now, I'm to the point where I've got a drill bit that matches your bolt holes for your cam. And I'm gonna open up this uh, dowel hole to the size of those bolt holes. So when you're coming down, you need to center this thing. You'll feel it with your left hand. Center it. Slow. Smaller sizes that I started with drilled a lot easier than that, but it's off so we don't hurt ourselves. So now we've got all four, all four of those holes the same size. Now I'm going to have to step it up two bits at a I'm going to do two cuts because I'm not 100% confident because this is a big bit. A 13 30 second, that's, that's pretty big. So I'm planning on doing two cuts from this point to get to the 13 30 second. So let's see if we can make that happen. Okay guys, I went ahead and skipped ahead. <clears throat> Had a little bit of issues with the drill press. So I got, this is my final cut on the 13 30 second holes. And I did the dowel, I did the dowel hole last. So now we have, sorry about my arm being in the vidya. I usually think a little bit better than that. But basically what we've done is we've enlarged all four of those holes to a 13 30 second, which will allow me to put in a offset degree bushing in the hole that engages the dowel on the end of the camshaft and slightly alter the position now i believe i needed a two degree bushing i'm gonna install it temporarily and not not peen it in or anything because i just want to do a test here's a shot after cleanup with the offset camshaft degree bushing installed in the cam gear so let's move move over to the engine see what's going on okay guys i've got the uh, offset degree cam bushing installed in the cam gear i've got it installed with the new ls2 chain and right now we're setting that tdc we're going to run through our cam intake center line one more time and just see what we get Basically, again, you just watch your dial indicator because you're going to set up your dial indicator on your lifter and you're going to rotate it clockwise. It's going to keep going up. If you're watching the needle on the dial indicator, it'll just keep going up. It's going clockwise. And it should get to a point right there. Or if I turn it any more clockwise, it won't go any higher. That is your apex. That's the top, the peak of your lobe. See? I've got that thing set on zero. 
and no matter which way I go, it can't go above it, that's going to indicate the apex of the lobe or the peak. Again, we're going to go first, we're going to go backwards so that we can go a little bit past our 50 thousandths. And we're going to take up our chain stretch. We're going to stop right on 50 thousandths, or as close as we can humanly get to it. Went a little too far. It's something you'll have to work with. Just trying to control exactly where you stop this thing. All right, our first number is 69. Okay, so now our 50, our lift, 50 thousandths before peak or max is 69. So now we're gonna go clockwise again. Now we're boom, we're at the apex. Now we're gonna come over the lobe and start coming down. We're gonna stop at 50. And again, go as slow as you need to to make sure you're dead on the money. Okay, make sure we didn't move. I kind of wiggled it when I pulled the my back up and just be safe. My wrench got stuck on there when I was okay, right there. That is. 151 and a half. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do, same thing we've been doing, see what we get here. Now that we've put in our degree bushing to try to change our intake center line, we got a 69 plus 151.5 is 220. Well, I like that number. I got, you add those two numbers together, you get 220.5, divide by two, boom. I now have an intake center line of 110.25. They're asking for a 110, I'm at 110 and a quarter with this rudimentary caveman setup I have. That's about as good as you're gonna get, guys. 110.25. I can live with that all day long. And all it took was a 13 30 second drill bit and a, what is that, like an $8 set of cam bushings. Dialed this baby in to exactly where I want it to be so I know it's going to run as expected in the engine. So there is your intake center line camshaft degreeing process. It's not hard. It's not hard at all guys take the time to learn it go through it as many times as you have to because once you do it a handful of times you can start showing everybody else how to do it and once you, they say the best way to learn something is to show somebody else i don't know if that makes sense to everybody but the process of understanding it well enough to walk through a process to someone else is going to teach you so uh, that's the process i'm happy with the results I will take a little, uh, probably a, I won't use a punch, I'll probably use a chisel, and just put some marks around that cam bushing so I know it, there's no way it can walk out during operation or move. Because it is a, I would call a press fit. Like when I installed it in that 13, 30 second hole, I had to, to tap it in with a hammer so it's not just slid, it won't just fall out on its own. But once you add in heat cycles and junk like that, it's probably going to be better to go ahead and put a little peen in around it and put a little metal over the edge so it can't come out. So there's my vidya for today. I hope you guys are able to learn something and figure out what's going on. Try to make that power as uh, inexpensively as you can because, you know, deep pocket racing, that's cool for some people, but if you can't afford it, don't stop racing and don't try to go racing just because you ain't got money falling out your butt. So thanks again for watching. Like, subscribe, share, hit that bell. Um, thumbs up as much as you can because like I said, apparently YouTube likes that. So thanks again.